Okay, this is the transformation trig graph transformation video number two. So I'm working through the notes that we're going to do in class because I have a bunch of kids absent. So you're welcome. Um, so on this one, there we go watch the first video for one through three and the introduction. But on this one, we're saying they're telling us to graph three times cosine of x plus one. So you'll notice the first thing that that you always have to know is what does the parent function look like. And the parent function of cosine looks something like this, um, where this goes as high as positive 1, and it goes as low as negative 1, and it does that in 2 pi. Okay, So since it does the whole thing in 2 pi, then this is halfway as pi, half of that. My scale is a little off, but let's just go with it. This is pi over 2. This is 3 pi over 2. Okay, and that's the parent function. So now you'll notice the 3 impacts the amplitude. So your amplitude is now going to be equal to 3. So instead of going up as high as positive 1 and as low as negative 1, I'm now going to change these. Um, it's now going to go up to 3. This needs to become 3, so, and that needs to become negative 3. Then the other thing that happens, notice that my b value is still just 1. My c value is still a 0, but I have a d value of positive 1. So this tells me that I'm going to shift up 1 unit. So with what had been negative 3 now becomes negative 2 because I have to go up 1. What was positive 3 now becomes positive 4. So the final answer looks something like this. Oops, sorry, here you go. Um, where I'm going as high as positive 4. I get to this midline, and you always want to... Um, I don't draw the midline, but like these, these points, I often find kids will try and keep this point on the axis. Well, it doesn't go on the axis. It was at the axis. Remember, it was at the axis, but then I had to move it up one. Um, and then this, it goes as low as negative two. And so I will want to see that you've labeled, um, these are the one, two, three, four, five points that I care about. Okay. Um, so the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity because it's a cosine function. The range, we went as low as negative 2, as high as 4. The period didn't change. It's still 2 pi. The amplitude is 3, and there are no asymptotes. Okay, so the next one, we have um, y equals negative tangent of 2x. So on that one, we have changed our period. So if you remember, tangents, the parent function has a period of, of pi, so this is pi over 2. So now... Instead of, so tangent looks like this. That's the parent function of tangent. Well, everything normally, this one here at negative pi over 2 and this one here at pi over 2, those have a, a, a distance, a part of pi units. Oops, sorry, you can't see that. Um, but now everything got squished in. Well, that squishing in doesn't change this 0, but it does change where these asymptotes are. So what that will do for us is... Um, is it'll now make these come in half of that distance. So this is now negative, oh, so far. So, sorry, pi over 4 and then a positive pi over 4. And we're still here. And that's how we take care of the period of, uh, when, of pi over 2. So notice these are now um, pi over 2 units apart. Um, the negative out front means that instead of going, uh, you know, increasing like this, we are now reflected over the x-axis and we're now decreasing. So we're doing something like this. So here's how I put it on my answer key. Um, I said that the, I, I should put domain and range at the end of my list, because I always do those last. The period was pi over 2. The amplitude, there's none, because it's tangent. The asymptotes, well, I, I like to use, I like to base it off of the first positive one, and then talk about how far apart they are. Okay, so you'll notice this first positive one is at pi over 4, and then they are pi over 2 apart. Um, so I could draw, if I wanted to, this next one is at 3 pi over 4. That's a 4. Um, and this point right here would be pi over 2, and it's doing this. So here, would now I've given you two periods of that same graph. Um, the domain coming back is um, everything but the asymptotes, and the range is all reals. Okay, so the last one. Um, is 2 cosecant of x over 3. Um, and notice on this one, they wrote it in a way, by they I mean me, haha. Uh -huh. um, sometimes it's more helpful to see it like this, because then you can see, okay, my b value is equal to 1 third. So then what I have, um, this is cosecant, cosecant's parent function has a period of 2 pi, 2 pi divided by 1 third, that means 2 pi times 3. 
Um, so our parent function is six, or I lied, our period of this new guy is six pi. Um, so taking that into consideration, I now have, I'm gonna do everything I need to do by six pi. Well, cosecant has an asymptote at zero and an asymptote halfway through. So halfway through from zero to six pi is three pi. And then we also need to know these values halfway between there. So this is three pi over two. So I'm at three pi over two. This is six pi over two. This is nine pi over two. That's 12 pi over two. So just before I reduce those fractions. And now the two is something where we have to mind the gap. It'll, it'll pull the, the ones that open up, up, and the ones that open down, down. Um, and so we end up getting this graph right here, where we're sitting at uh, 3 pi over 2, 2, and opening up. We're sitting at 9 pi over 2, negative 2, and opening down. Um, then x, okay, so the asymptotes, these are how far apart? Well, they happen to be 3 pi apart, and we can just say 3 pi k, because here we plug in k equals 0, here's k equals 1, k equals 2, and that's how we get our asymptotes, it's x, x equals 3 pi k. Um, therefore, it's a set x such that x is not equal to 3 pi k. The range, negative infinity to 2, mind the gap, 2 to infinity. The period we already said was 6 pi, and um, it has no amplitude. Okay, I hope that's helpful. We are going to definitely do some harder ones um, soon, but hopefully that gets you, gets you going.